Do I have regrets? Some. Do I wish that I had checked the recipe I found against other comparable recipes for sweet rolls before I had started baking? Did I make a mess? Yeah, absolutely. What's life without some regrets? There is a bakery in Japan that is making the cutest bread buns. They are corgi buns. How cute is that? So, have I ever made bread before? No. I made some gluten-free dinner rolls last year for Thanksgiving that turned out like, okay. Um, and uh, I was really proud of those, but I am not gonna attempt to make these gluten-free until I've successfully made them with normal flour. Today we are going to try our hand at making sweet rolls, and then we are going to shape them like corgi buns. And hopefully they will look like this. And if not, hopefully they'll still taste good. I found a recipe online that kind of breaks down how to make it and measure it and get it all rising together. And so we're gonna try our best um, I've got flour, yeast, butter, salt, eggs, sugar, whole milk, and then chocolate to do some of the decorating. So we're gonna go give this our best try. We want one cup of warm water and one cup of whole milk warm. The quarter cup of melted butter and the half cup of sugar. And that's gonna feed the yeast and mix well. And then we're gonna take a packet of active dry yeast. We're supposed to sprinkle that on and let it bloom for five to 10 minutes. So we have four cups of flour, all-purpose flour, and we're gonna get a teaspoon and a half of salt. So the recipe that I'm following has a picture of what the yeast should look like, uh, and that is not what it looks like. I read the back of the yeast packet. It said, uh, wait for it to foam and the foam to double in volume, which it has done. So we're gonna give this a try as it is. So we're supposed to add one egg to the yeast mixture. Slowly drizzle yeast mixture into flour and mix well till a shaggy dough forms. So I'm going to just add a little bit. Okay. Okay, I say as if this is like the very beginning and easy part of this. There's still plenty of time for me to have messed up. I think I only put three cups of flour in here. Sometimes you just have to go to the store at 10 o'clock at night to get more flour and milk because you messed up the recipe that badly. But we're gonna see if maybe this time is different. Am I confident that it will be? No. But this yeast has a recipe on the back for sweet rolls. We're gonna try that one and see if that's any better. The thing is, is that it has about the same amount of water and milk and sugar and all of that, it just has twice the amount of flour. So I think the recipe that I found online has gotta be a mistake. We're just gonna go ahead and put that to the side. Yeah, we've even foregone like the nice cutting board because it's still covered in dough. So we're just gonna, 
we're just gonna do it this way. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take half a packet of the active dry yeast, and then we're gonna dissolve it with half a tablespoon of sugar in warm water. Uh, the first attempt did not go super well. Wait, it's almost <laughs> 11 o'clock. There were some mistakes made, and the recipe it turns out that that guy is using is wrong. It's about half as much flour as you need. How do you determine that? Because I looked up other recipes for rolls. You're not good at baking, though. <laughs> this truly looks like a disaster. <laughs> Bye. Ah. <sighs> So here is the milk and butter and sugar mix. We're gonna add one cup of flour. We're gonna add the yeast slurry. Oh, foamy. And the eggs. And then we are going to add the remaining flour and knead until no longer sticky. Okay, so I'm gonna try just dumping that on. So the original recipe said when you got to this point, you were going to have to knead it for five to ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, huh, out of breath. So now we are going to place dough in a greased bowl and then cover with a damp towel and let rise until doubled in size. Guys, we have dough. I'm so excited. Um, so now, punch down the dough and then divide and roll into the shape we want it in. So, do I punch it in the bowl? Do I take it out? I'm gonna punch it in the bowl. I'm just gonna divide it in half. We'll put that covered so it doesn't dry out. We're gonna do 50 grams for the legs and then I guess three for the, I have no idea. How much is that? Ooh, okay. So I need to go a lot smaller. Okay, we'll make them into little legs. Put those together. They're all about the same size. Well, they are They're the same weight. All right. Okay, I don't want these to dry out, so I am gonna go ahead and put them onto here and then cover them. There's a little tail. Here's our little butts. We're gonna let them proof again, proof, proof. I should probably look that up. Um, and then we're gonna give them a bake. So we just went ahead and melted a little bit of chocolate and I'm using a toothpick to paint the little paws onto each foot. Uh, then you have to just let them set for a little bit. But look at these paws. Look at how cute they turned out. And it really looks like a corgi butt. You can't tell me that doesn't look like a corgi butt. Um, went ahead and just put some powdered sugar on it as well just to make it a little sweeter and more dessert-like. I didn't actually fill the legs with anything, but you could fill it with chocolate, which I think is what we're going to do next time. And since I can't eat it, take a look at the inside of this bread and tell me that doesn't look like bakery bread. I am really impressed with how this turned out and feedback from the people who can eat it said that it tasted really good. 
everyone was highly amused by the shape and Ryan said it tasted like it could have come from a bakery. So I'm super impressed. It was a lot of fun and I can't wait to make these again. 